Hey there, how's it going? I'm Gemma Hickey, the author of Almost Feral, published by Breakwater Books. And I'm coming to you today from my office in St. John's, Newfoundland, and Labrador, the best place in the world. No offense, Atlantic Canada. I got a lot of love for the rest of the provinces, but this is my home. And today I'm going to read from my memoir, Almost Feral, a chapter called Confession. But first, I want to thank the Atlantic Book Awards for inviting me to read today. And I also want to congratulate the authors whose books have been shortlisted in the same two categories as my memoir, Almost Feral. It's certainly a pleasure to be among you. I'm so honored. And those categories are the Atlantic Publishers Marketing Association Best Atlantic Published Book Award in Nonfiction. That's a mouthful. And the Margaret and John Savage First Book Award in Nonfiction. Again, it's an honor to be included among you. I hope you enjoy what I'm about to read. My book covers all different types of themes that intersect um, my journey across Newfoundland on foot, led me back to myself in more ways than one as I reflected with each step. And this chapter is one that's a bit lighter than the rest of the book, but uh, I um, tried to balance it out. So I hope you enjoy it. Here we go. I fell in love for the first time at the age of eight. She was two years my senior. No surprise to those who know me. And the prettiest girl in school. Her name was Tammy. And when she sang in the church choir, her voice lifted me so high it was as if I had wings. She lived with her family just down the street. Her house was shabby looking from the outside and the car her father drove had been parked on the side of her house for months. It was rusty and the fender was almost off. It only cost me a Mr. Freeze, one of those frozen juice pops in a plastic tube, to find out from her friend Andrea about the doll that Tammy wanted from Woolworths but couldn't afford. So... I made it my mission to get it for her. I decided to risk everything for love, even my mortal soul. On Sundays during Mass, my mother would hand me change from her purse for the collection plate, and I'd lower my hand in to the basket just enough so it looked like the change was being dropped inside. I'd pull my hand out carefully, fistful of coins, and steadily slip it into my pocket. After five consecutive Sundays, Tammy got her doll, and I got her attention. Months later, I wasn't sure what to expect when I was with my class in the church for our first confession. I remember asking my classmates what they were going to say. I knew we were required to say specific lines in response to the priest. We were given those lines in advance as homework. Our teacher told us to practice them until we knew them by heart. When the day arrived, I knew the script but I was having a difficult time deciding what sins to tell the priest. I asked my friends what sins they were going to confess, so at least I'd have a frame of reference. One boy told me he was going to make up some sins just to keep things interesting, but he was always getting into trouble at school, so I didn't understand why he'd need to make up anything at all. Another classmate said she was going to come clean about feeding her dog Fluffy the vegetables that her mother put on her plate at dinner time. And someone else added that she was going to mention the time when she spoke out of turn in class and the teacher put her in the corner. I must be really sinful, I thought. I took the collection money from my mother to buy Tammy a doll. But God had to forgive me. After all, that's what God does for a living. Then it was my turn to go in. The confessional was dark and the air was as heavy as the sin-burdened souls who entered there. I kneeled down and clasped my hands together tightly as if I was about to pray. When the priest opened the shutter and appeared behind the screen of the confessional, his face was turned from me. I was about to bear my heart and soul to him. The least he could do was look at me, I thought. So I asked him, Father, can you look at me? He seemed surprised by my request, but he did as I asked. He was a gentle older priest and well-liked among his parishioners. His face was as round as his dark rimmed glasses. He was short, but his presence was uplifting. When he was assigned to another parish, we were all very sad to see him go. I made the sign of the cross and said, 
Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. But then I went off script again. I told the priest I learned the difference between mortal and venial sins in class, but I didn't know how to be sorry for my sin because I didn't know what type of sin it was. At first he seemed rather confused, if not a little intrigued. What is your sin, my child, he asked. Mom handed me change for collection and I kept it so I could buy something for a girl whose family is poor. And we had to help those less fortunate, right, Father? I swear I saw a grin come over the priest's face when I told him what I had done. But the confessional was dimly lit, so I couldn't be sure. He invited me to offer an act of contrition, and so I had recited what I had memorized. Oh my God, I am sorry for my sins with all my heart. In choosing to do wrong and failing to do good, I have sinned against you whom I love above all things. I firmly intend with your help to do penance, to sin no more, and to avoid, avoid whatever leads me to sin. Our Savior, Jesus Christ, suffered and died for us. In his name, my God, have mercy. He told me that while my intentions were good and my cause was a noble one, I did take the money without permission. He advised me to do an act of charity for my mother. In the meantime, as my penance, he told me to say the Hail Mary three times. When I compared my penance to that of my classmates, I felt like I got off easy. So when I left school that day, I went home, and I didn't just clean my room. I tidied the house, dusted the furniture, and vacuumed the carpet. When my grandfather saw how hard I was working, he slipped me a $2 bill and told me not to tell my mother. I asked him if he thought I should put it in the collection plate on Sunday, and he told me that I had done enough good for one day. He made a compelling point. I smiled as I pocketed my crisp pink $2 bill and waited enthusiastically for my mother to get home from work. I love how my Newfoundland accent comes out sometimes when I read. Thanks again.